Hey guys, welcome to MFJ. I'm here with uh, Martin F. Jew, founder of uh, MFJ. Everybody knows Martin. He's on our show all the time, and we always like visiting and looking at all the uh, vintage stuff here. And uh, this is a happy place, man. Martin, and y your your middle name is Fun, right? The, the F stands for Fun, right? That's right. Uh, F U N, my middle name. <laughs> okay, all right. I pull out my driver's license, and you can see it. <laughs> All right, so Fun's his middle name there. All right, well, look, hey, you added anything new, uh, Ed? Uh, if, uh, hey, our cameraman is Ed Harrison tonight. Thank you, uh, Ed, for being with us. And look, again, guys, if you've never seen this uh, the vintage equipment here uh, in uh, Martin's uh, office, take a look at this. Boy, there's more behind there. Martin, you got anything new lately? Um, no, I don't think there's anything new up here. It's been rearranged. There may be some new stuff. I think you probably have bought everything that's out there. You got one model of everything. Uh, did you get that up there yet, any of that? Look at that. Hey, this was, uh, that was a neat transmitter. That was my transmitter back. I built that in my novice phase, 150 watts VFO. Of course, as a novice, we had to run a crystal, and it could only run 75 watts. And look around this way. He's got my first receiver, man. This was uh, this Helicrafter's uh, receiver here. SX140 was my first receiver. Brings back old times. Suitcase up here. What is that? That's a instructor graph that taught Morse code using uh, paper tape. That cardboard box above it is a box of tapes, paper tapes, and it would play Morse code and. That's how you would learn it. It's a military device. Yeah, I, I've seen those. Hey, uh, uh, let's just look around here a little bit more and see what we got. Uh, you got your famous picture there. Now, the, this is your store where you grew up. You had your ham shack upstairs in the attic. And, and Martin tells us he didn't even have a floor up in the attic. I don't know how that worked out. Now, tell us about the dog. Do you know who that dog was? Yeah, that's Pokey. That's a, a, a German Shepherd that used to uh, be our uh, pet back then. But if you look over there to the right of the door, that tank, that's a Kolar tank, C-O-A-L, kerosene. Cool. Yeah, I know what that is. Yeah. They used it in uh, Kolar lamps. Uh, lots of folks didn't have electricity back then. So in that little store, you, you, you guys, now... You started working at store when you were really young. How 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 old were you when you started working here? Uh, we were about six years old. And, I mean, we had to stand on milk crates so we could see people above the counter. <laughs> oh man! So and you did a little bit of everything. You sold coal oil in there. You uh, it was kind of like a general store. Did you? Well, um, mainly, I, food. mainly food. We sold some hardware. Um, we sold uh, meat, uh, canned goods, um, sacks of flour, uh, carbide lights. Uh, you probably don't even know what carbide light is. Yeah. Yeah. No, we sold hammers. I was always afraid you might catch your hair, hair on fire with a carbide light, man. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Well, you know, we don't have that problem now. <clears throat> um, so, so, uh, we lived in the back of the store, and we got to climb upstairs into the attic, and... Uh, uh, set up the ham shack. All right. Well, tell me here how you hooked your antenna up. This is the store right here. Now, did, did you have a, 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 a vent or something up here in the attic where you'd run the wire out? Yeah, out the back. It went all the way out the back. There was a big thing, you know, where you put a big attic fan. Yeah. Well, we didn't have an attic fan, but there was a big hole with louvers back there, and I would run the wire out and... and uh, just kind of nail the antenna along the eaves uh, okay. at the beginning, and then after a while, it went out to some trees. Went out to some of the trees here. Well, this is cool here. Now, y you and your family lived, I think, in that yeah, store, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. Now we uh, there at one time there were eleven of us that lived in the back of that store. Well, you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to tell us the story. I, I've got a little short video on you cutting the cheese. You want to talk about the cheese? Oh yeah. Well, um, let's see. Uh, that was uh, king of cotton back in that during that time. 
um, the, everywhere there was cotton around on the side of the store, uh, uh, cotton fields, and and planes would uh, biplanes would come and spray DDT on the cotton, and we as kids would run out in the cotton field, lay down so you know we'd get up all yellow with DDT. Oh yeah. But anyway, there were uh, cotton choppers, and what they did was to chop the weeds uh, out of the rows of cotton. And during lunchtime, they would get truckloads of people come in and buy lunch. And they would uh, always order 15 cents worth of cheese, a package of crackers, and uh, RC cola. So I would have to cut 15 cents worth of cheese from a hoop using a hand knife. Well, you you know, I couldn't always cut 15 cents worth, so I would ask them, is 17 cents okay? And I said, no, 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 I want 15 cents worth, so I'll just take a bite off the oh, cheese. Yeah. Hey, you're talking about RC Colas. Did, I, I bet you guys sold moon pies back then, too. Oh, we sold lots of moon pies. Moon pies, yeah. moon pies that, that's, a good, that's a good snack in the South, RC Cola and a moon pie, right? Yep, good snack. And the other story that just fascinates me is I, I, I know you were talking about dragging a piece of meat down the hallway that was almost as heavy as you. How did you do that? Well, we had a big walk-in cooler, and there were four quarters of beef hanging on hooks. And you have to take that and bring it out and to the saw and uh, the cleaver and cut it up. Well, sometimes... Uh, those uh, four quarters were so big I couldn't pick them up, so I just dragged them across the floor to the butcher block. You know. <laughs> oh, now, did did you actually cut the meat yourself? Yeah, yeah, I cut the meat. So, so you grew up in the Delta down on Highway 61 down here. You know, I grew up in the Delta on Highway 61 up in Arkansas, not too far from you. Uh, uh, so uh, our past kind of Cross in that area. You got your license a little bit before me. When, when did you get yours? About 1960? Uh, 1960, yeah. I think it was well, like. You, you beat me. I was 16, but I got mine in 64. And at what age did you get your license? I was 16, too. And that that Highway 61, you know, that's the famous blues highways that came all the way from Baton Rouge, the most southern part of the country, all the way up to Canada. Famous, famous, and especially right through your area, my area was cotton, cotton country there. Hey, did you? I, I, I know you served the cotton choppers and people like that, but did you serve any exotic like uh, Peking duck or anything? Did you ever have Peking duck there? No, but we sell a lot of neck bones. Yeah. Neck bones, huh? Okay. Well, you know, I've never eaten a neck bone myself, but I would imagine. Is it Oh, neck bones are great. You know, it's meat that falls off the bones and cook with black eyed peas. Oh, it's great. You know, lots of soul food. Well, I tell you, I like the black eyed peas, but I like cornbread with it. What about you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cornbread, turnip greens, uh, spinach mostly, turnip greens, collard greens. Uh, let's see. I can't remember now. Black eyed peas, things like. Pig ears, oxtail. You, you had pig ears and oxtail? Oh, yeah, yeah. You eat it or just sell it? Oh, no. We sold it and ate it. Okay. Yeah. Well. Look, hey, let's uh, let's uh, get our cameraman to follow us. And let's walk through the other side over here. I just, you got some neat things you've been, this is where you kind of experiment, isn't it? You, you kind of work on stuff and experiment over here. Yeah, I just got that nice way of Come on in here. Yeah, this thing here that um step over here, here Mark, right here. Tell us what you got going here, man. That's a OHW16. That's old novice uh, heat kit. Um, it's really a transmitter and a receiver. Um, didn't have a VFO. You use crystals on it, and um, it was designed for the novice. Um, it had uh, 80 meters, 40 meters, and 15 meters, and uh, I'm just um, uh, taking the 15 meter band and converting it into the 20 meter band. Uh, I'm okay. just playing around. All right, 
And here's some homebrew stuff. Well, that's just a tube, maybe some type tube radio that you built here, or? Uh, yeah, that was um, a uh, tube transmitter. A tube transmitter. I'll see the tube there. Yeah, Look at there. Piece of PC board with a hose cut for the tube. And yep. Uh, I had a regenerative receiver with a uh, tube transmitter. I'm, I'm just. You're just playing. That's nothing you're thinking about selling with the MFG, is it? No, no, tubes are out, right? Tubes are out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, let's, uh, hey, let's get on down here if we can. Boy, man, now, the, I don't know. I think you got some new stuff. Hey, this uh, Span Master. Now, tell us about the oh, Span Master. Yeah, that is a new one. That's, um, this was back in the uh, 50s and 60s. That's a night kit, and um, this one was – that. Night Kid had three regenerative receivers, the Ocean Hopper, the Span Master, and the Space Spanner. And I started off with the Space Spanner. I have one or two of them over here. But the Span Master was the top of the line, and um, it had a, a regenerative control and a fine regen control. Um, I see that one is new. Um, this thing here, I think is what is it? That's a uh, multiplexer, key multiplexer. Okay, yeah, key, yeah, key multiplier. You got stuff in here you've you've collected. You don't even know what it is. Yeah. All right. Here's a here's a uh, lunchbox, heat kit lunchbox. Now was that two meter or six meter? Well, let's see which one. They, they, made, they made both, uh, didn't they? Yeah, they made six meters, two meters, ten meters, um, and that is a Conar. Conar, yeah. Yep. And the matching transmitter down here. Wow, so that's cool here. <clears throat> well, man, I, I just, I, I, it's like Christmas every time I come, Martin. Uh, we have a, a great time, a great time here. We'll, uh, we'll walk back in the office here, and I know we're uh, just seeing uh, very small parts of this. Hey, hey, here's an old, uh, arc, is it an ARC-5? ARC-5. Now, that was a transmitter, right? Well, Oh, the arc fives receiver. Yeah. Okay. So what was that all? I was gonna pick those up and you know, you know, uh, this military stuff back in the early '60s, '50s, uh, you could get your hands on it pretty good, pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people use these for, or the transmitter, I guess, for a VFO. You know, for some of the rigs. Well, they did. What you're holding in your hand is a complete 80 meter receiver three to six megahertz fine tuning yeah. um i think you um seem like you had to put a vfo con switch on so you turn it on and off just re you it was wired up i think for yeah 24 volts and you rewired a filament all right i see something here interesting let me get it out here i want you to tell us what this is this is uh i don't know I don't know. Is, is this something? Is this something real? Is this real? Oh yeah. Is this uh, a antenna for uh, for your house? This telescopes up. It's uh, loaded. You can Step push. <coughs> you can push this up against the wall, okay. and extend oh, and these out. Yeah, that's for your top loading. And this also telescopes all the oh, way up to the roof, I mean, yeah. to the ceiling. Is this like and a, this uh, is an antenna tuner. It's a transmitting antenna. Transmitter? Yeah. No, I mean, it's a trans transmitting antenna. You can put a ground on it. Okay. Uh, just, you know, counter power. Just lay it on yeah. the floor. Just lay the whole thing on the floor. Move this antenna up and extend this out, and you and have a complete you top loading, and it keeps right. You from having to go so tall, right? right. Now, is this a product that you guys are thinking about making? Well, it was something I was playing with. Yeah, we could make this. I was thinking about it, but I never got around to finishing it. Well, you know, I know a lot of a lot of things that you make here over the years are ideas that people send you little uh, notes, or you talk to people that come visit, and uh, uh, you'll write those things down in, in your book there, and Sometimes, sometimes uh, those ideas. Well, I think, hey, we're going to just walk around through the back back here. And, uh, hey, uh, come on, cameraman, and let's, uh, let's just take a walk through if we, if we can. We didn't, uh, we didn't even get a chance to look at some of the radios down here at the end of the hall. What do you got? You got anything down here new? Uh, well...
Look at this. Look at this. And I was just looking at your collection of uh, QSTs and so forth. Uh, hey, he's got his collection of QSTs go back. Here. These are 1950s. And I remember getting this size back in the 60s. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I save all my uh, uh, magazines. And I think I'm going to go through them here soon and see if there's any projects. You know, there's neat projects every now and then. Yeah, yeah, there are. They're still applicable. Especially the ones like Brantanus. All right, all right. Let's. Uh, hey, wait, wait. What do we got here? We got personnel. No, no, we, wait, wait, wait. Turn around. We've got we got Randy Romero here. Personnel. Are you allowed to carry a drill? I am, and I'm getting ready to uh, fix the ladies' bathroom door. Oh, so hope I tell you, that's a great job. That great job, personnel. That's that's good, man. All right, let's go down here, Ed, and let's walk back in the back here. Let's see what he's working on. <clears throat> oh, he's not here. He's not here. Okay, well. Oh, let's look at the loop here. This is the, the automatic loop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. That's a pretty big capacitor you've got in there, Martin. Yeah, that's that's uh, that operate down to 40 meters, and there's the automatic loop tuning box, that black box over there. Okay. Yeah. What kind of power will this handle? Uh, it's not terribly great spacing, but there's a lot of voltage here. Yeah, a lot of voltage. Oh, it, it'll handle at least 150 watts. I've I've had these up to four or five hundred watts, yeah. but we don't like to rate it at that level. And, you know, on our show, we've been talking about building some loops, and we've been experimenting with several. And But the, the nice thing about all your stuff is welded here, man. There are no uh, uh, contact points. That's right. That's right. Everything is welded. Even the capacitor is welded. Every plate of the capacitor is welded. You know, these capacitors are available. If anybody needs a, a, a butterfly really high efficient capacitor they're available from and us you you stamp these out and you make these here yeah we do we make the entire capacitor all the parts we make on well that's cool even the, your uh even the, the plastic here yeah there. yeah back and form right. yeah. well, let's walk back in the back and see what's going on back here go right ahead let's, let's just stick our head in here in the service but hey hey service department guys how you doing man Doing, doing good. We just down visiting again today, and we uh, just want to stick our heads in. How's service today? That's great. Uh, it's going good. Uh, we uh, get some things done. Um, today about almost the end of the week, so um, normally the phone is not ringing as much as ring about the first part of the week, and that gives us a chance to get some work done. But uh, yeah. yes, sir. Well, cool. Good. Keep it running. Oh, thank you, sir. Keep it running, man. So, now where are all the tables where the people are building the stuff? I thought it was in here. In the back of here, behind here? Well, you know, this looks larger than I, I remembered it from being here last time. Hi. Hi. Doing good. So this is, this is our shipping, domestic shipping right here. Look at this. Hi. How you doing? Are you shipping? Where are you shipping to today? What city? Uh, this is going to Sissonville, West Virginia. All right, West Virginia. Virginia. Florida and some place in Tennessee I can't pronounce. Tennessee? What? Well, show me. You try. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Kula, Kula Oak, uh, Tennessee, wherever that is. Yeah, it sounds like an Indian name there. All right. Yeah, yeah. I, I know where I am now. I just I didn't remember this being so large here. All right. We'll uh, we'll take a quick walk around here. Hey, uh, 
uh, I love the tuners. This is your, is this the 1.5 kilowatt or the 600 watt, maybe 600? The 300 watt version here, yeah. This is the 600 watt yeah, version. Yeah, 600. Watt. Yeah. yeah. I've got one of the uh, 1.5 kilowatts, and I love it. It uh, it does great. Well, what's going on right here, uh, Martin? It looks like she's covering holes up. I guess is is that so? When you run it through the machine, you won't get solder in the holes, right? These are all the surface mount parts here, and then it uh, comes over here, and the through hole parts, the big parts, you have to put on by hand, parts like this. Yeah. And the relays. And you wind all these yourself, right? Yeah, we have some toroy coil winding machine for doing this. If you look down here, there's there's actually, there's actually three boards. This one right here, one, two, three. And these boards are connected together by this ribbon, and you just break them apart. I was going to say that's a big roll of solder, but that's wire. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that is, uh, that's, that's cool. So it starts there, and it kind of goes down through here, and we've got, it becomes a tuner at the end of the line. Okay. All right. That's the big, yeah. Piece of wire. I think it's a piece of wire, yeah. Okay. So, okay, I don't know. What is it? Uh, this is a noise canceling device that takes the um, uh, signal and noise from the main antenna and then you connect another antenna that picks up more to noise, and then you combine them. Is that kind of like a diversity uh, well, deal? Or something? Well, no. It you, you you adjust the magnitude and the phase, so the magnitudes are equal in the phase. It's 180 degrees out for the noise, and the noise gets canceled out, and it leaves the signal. So now, is this audio or is this uh, uh, RF? This RF. is RF. That's yeah. that's cool. And you can have two stations, let's say, for example, two broadcast stations on the AM band on exactly the same frequency but uh, at different locations. Well, you can notch out one of those stations and hear the other one on the same frequency. Well, that's, uh, that's cool. M more tuners? And what are we, this is a uh, same, this we've already looked at, this is a tuner, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, here's the rig pie, guys. You know, we've been talking about the rig pie for a long time, and here's uh, uh, a bunch of rig pies being built. This is based on the uh, raspberry pie, and uh, yeah. Well, that is uh, so cool. This is, I guess, these go in the rig pond. I think that's part of the soundboard. Yeah, that's the soundboard. Okay. Hello, Mark. How are you, Mark? 75 TXR. How you doing? Yeah, you got a wire around your arm there. You going to electrocute me? No, I'm grounded. Okay. <laughs> well, get that tuner fixed here, man. All right. Let's see what we got down here. Bias T's. I'm going to pick one up, but I'm going to put it right back where I got it. There's a bias T, guys. If you don't want to run an extra cable out to your tuner or antenna switch, this is all it takes. This is a bias T. This lets you run your DC voltage, like 12 volts or whatever, out across your coax. So there it is right there. And who am I talking to here? I'm John, uh, KG5 AMU. EMU. Hey, John, uh, what are you working on down here? Uh, anything and everything. Anything. You're a, you're a catch-everything type guy, right? Well, good. 
Very good. What's this pile of stuff you got here? This is something that's been being built right here. Yes, those are boards I've just finished pre-testing, getting them cleaned up, all the shorts, everything cleaned off the back. That way our testers can have an easier time, get it done quicker. Okay. Well, very good. Hello, Jason. Hey, how are you? Turn around this way. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, wait, there we go. <laughs> hey, what are you working on here? Oh, that, that looks this like an audio, a USB to audio converter or something. Yeah, this is actually the sound cards that go on the, the 1204. The sound card interfaces. What's the 1204? The uh, sound card interface does all the digital oh, modes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, Martin, that will also work in a rig pie. Yeah. Did you know that? You can plug it in and have a different soundboard in a rig pie. Good idea. Yeah. A regenerative receiver, okay. Let's see what he's working on here. Oh, hey, that's a cool looking little. Let's turn it around where we can see it. Cool. And uh, what what kind of is that? that? Looks like it covers pretty much the short wave spectrum, doesn't it? Is it like three to thirty? Yeah, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yeah, okay. That's cool. Now that that that's uh the that's your MFJ uh, product. That, does, that Ve Vectronics don't you, don't you have some kits in Vectronics that are, are similar to that? Okay. It's a, uh, a replacement for the Nikit Space Spanner regenerative receivers. Okay. Oh, I hear, I hear some. I, is that a toroid winding or something? I hear noise. Let's let's see if we can watch a toroid being wound here. Where uh, where is it? Right back here. Toroid, toroid noise. Oh, it was way back here. There we go. We want to watch you make a toroid here. You know what's your name? My name Monique. Monique. Uh -huh. Hey Monique, um, are you gonna make a toroid there? Yes, sir. All right, cool. Okay. Oh, gee. We're going 14 turns. That's two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen times. My goodness. And I was wondering how that machine was going to wrap that wire around and around that thing, but it grabs it on the top up there. That's so cool, man. Yeah. Do you ever, you ever, hey, the big boss is here, but hey, okay. you ever got your finger caught in that no. thing? You never have? No, I never have. Okay. Well, well, you know, pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, pay attention. Yeah. I, they turn it. They they turn the uh, toroid as it as it puts on there. That is so cool. That's so much easier than that's so much easier than winding it by a hand. So you just put in that little hook right there, and it it pulls it through. Yeah. Yeah. I never knew how a sewing machine worked. I still can't figure that thing out, man. Okay, cool. Let's go back here and see what we missed here. Something going on? Famous dummy load. Now, do you have to supply your own oil for these? Miracle oil? I mean, uh, uh, something? Well, we, or? we have transformer oil. Transformer oil, okay. You can use mineral oil. Um, they come in gallon jugs. Could you use uh, used motor oil? Uh, motor oil wouldn't work very well. It wouldn't? Oh, I didn't know that. You know, I remember when these things came out many, many, well, even the 60s. I'm sure they were before that. Uh, they claimed they came out with the uh, transformer oil, PCB oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the old stuff. Yeah. yeah, they don't make that anymore. There's still transformer oil, but it doesn't have that in it. This is a vent hose. Yeah, I see that. Uh-huh, a vent. And this is uh, this a handle of what, a kilowatt? Or uh, yeah, a thousand watt continuous yeah, for 10 minutes. D rating curve on it. There's a graph. Very good. All right. Uh, that's a mount for a window. A window mount? Yeah. yeah. This mounts on the seat. On the, the, uh, the window comes down here? Or, or, right. or, or the window comes down and this clamps onto the window. And then your antenna goes out? It can go out this way. It can go down. It can go over this way. Or it can come up. So it's a real versatile mount. You can mount. Oh, yeah. yeah, you can even mount this. Onto a table like that, and uh, use it inside. 
That is, uh, that's, that's, that's true. That's true. Do you sell many of these around here? Okay. That's in contention in the RF design box. It's got variable capacitors, yeah. variable inductors. Um, it's got uh, fixed capacitors you can switch in. And um, no, you can build an antenna tuner with this, a yeah. uh, matching network, and get everything all working. Well, it's all in one thing. I remember uh, the early years, you know, your capacitance boxes and your resistance boxes. It's kind of similar, but this is all in one. Here. Yeah, and all the connections come out to these binding posts, so you can connect them any way you want to. All right. Yeah. Look at the way that we uh, make this. Uh, let's see if I have one here. There he is. Yeah, yeah, see? Oh, okay. And that's spacism. <coughs> and oh. then um, we take a switch and. Oh, uh, it's yeah. like an antenna tuner. And a yeah. Actually, uh, picks, off <coughs> picks off the inductance here. Yeah. Yeah. We, we take the insulation off and then just lay the switch on it and solder it. This is for QRP oh. tuning. Oh, okay, okay. This is for higher power tuning. Okay. What do we got? Oh, that's the bias T. More bias T's, okay. You have, you have, you have power, power poles? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's cool. Let me step around here. So this goes in your power pole. That's cool. Okay. Now, uh, do y'all still make your own coils yeah, here? We make it okay. Coils. And if you look at this, the strength of that is on the inside here. Oh, That's yeah. a solid fiberglass rod there. Yeah. And um, you, it, these wires are spaced, so you can put an alligator clip on it and make this adjustable. This is a three eighths by twenty four uh -huh. on on both ends, so you can screw this into a bumper mount or. In, or center loaded. Is this what you use on your mobile? Uh, this yeah. coil? Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's a good, really very, good very coil. Solid. Very, yeah. yeah, very solid. Very high Q. All right. <coughs> this is uh, the boxes for your power poles. That's cool. <coughs> well, don't know what it is, but. Uh, Analyzers, okay. This is a DC filter. Uh huh. <coughs> For your. Uh, Does that take like uh, wine, alternator wine uh, out? And yeah. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These are just the boxes for them. Uh -huh. Here we go into the antenna analyzers. Station for, uh, microscope station for finding shorts. Uh, on the bottom of PC boards. Okay. Yeah, that's a that's a binocular microscope. Okay, it just fits on top. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got a scope like this. Mm -hmm. I need to get me one of these to go in there. Yeah. Yeah. This is probably one of the best deals I think you make at your antenna analyzer. Yeah. You've got a couple of different models. I think one that uh, one that it goes through um, 450, and then one that goes up to like 220 or yeah. something. Like yeah, that. yeah. We have two two models, and then plus we have some others that's, that's got graphical yeah. displays on them. And uh, it looks like this must be a hot product. It is. That's one of our b best sellers. Mm -hmm. Uh, when did you first come out, like, with the antenna analyzer? Okay, you know, we were the first one to develop these. This is back, oh, early 90s. Yeah, yeah we had a, we had the very first ones. Yeah, uh, uh, it, it's, it, it's a great thing to have. Man. Yeah. It, it started off as a RF resistance meter, and then it all of a sudden it came to my 
mind, well, why don't I make this thing measure SWR? And that was the beginning of these things. Well, you know, as we look at all the different things you have here, uh, it's, uh, it's amazing that you've got so many different products. How many, how many products you got in your catalog now, do you know? Oh, it's over 2,000. Uh, and, and, you know, I bet you just about every ham shack in the United States has at least one MFJ product. And, and you've got a lot of international stuff, too, going, hadn't you? Okay. But uh, just the, the capacitor here, when we weld it, if you look down here, uh, you see an aluminum plate. Yeah. So we bought that plate on it, so when we weld it, that plate becomes a heat sink, and it keeps the plates from warping. Oh, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, and once we finish welding it, that plate comes off, and it's replaced by an insulating fiberglass plate. That's probably something you learned over the years as this thing evolved, right? This is the uh, uh, this is the butterfly capacitors, and you can see why it's called a butterfly from the shape. And all of these plates are tumbled, so all the edges are smooth, so it doesn't arc. This is for the uh, version that goes to 40 meters, and the smaller ones over there. Were that goes down to 30 meters. Okay. Uh, and here are some more coils. We make these coils too. And the, uh, oh, you, you make that over <coughs> at the at building, the, right? Yeah, yeah. That's in, in the building where uh, all the CNC punch presses are. Okay. We'll see yeah. that maybe in yeah. a while. Yeah. All right. Here is a manual screwdriver. Manual, manual screwdriver. Yeah, you just slide it up and down yeah. by hand. Now, so it got like a little yeah. thing that, tu that it touches here. Yeah, right there. Right there. There's a ber beryllium strip that goes around there. Well, it sounds like your uh, toroid lady is just built. You must you must use a lot of toroids here. Yeah. We're uh, we're looking at some of your tuners. I've got a tuner like this. These rotors, we make these rotors. We make these capacitors. When we walk down on the other end, you can see uh, the lady making these capacitors and rotors. So these are expensive parts, and you found a way to build your own instead of buying it. If you had to buy that, it would probably greatly increase the cost. Yeah, it'd be very expensive. These are available uh, to whoever. Uh, you know, needs to yeah, build, they build something. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Now we're uh, looks like we're checking out a tuner here. Yeah. And one of the things I've noticed in many of your positions around here, you have an HF radio, I guess, and you use an HF radio to uh, to check stuff out. Yeah. Plus that goes into an amplifier. Oh. Oh. Okay. And that way you can check it out for power, too. Mm -hmm. Cool. I know we're going kind of fast, but you got so much, so much to see here, man. We're, we're going backwards. Balance tuner. Are we going ba backwards? No, we're not. Oh, we should have started there. And, yeah. Okay. I love the balance tuners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a truly balanced tuner, and it's a very wide-range T-network. So what makes it a real balance besides the the ballon that's in there? I mean, it's, two, got, it's two got two tuners, tuners built into it. Okay. And if you look at the inside, there are four capacitors that are gain. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're going from uh, finished to the beginning. We're we're going the wrong way, but that's okay. Oh, that is uh, that's neat. Yeah, let's, let's turn it around. Let's turn it around so people can see it. See, when you turn this knob, you see these capacitors turning. Now, let's, let's, let's check this out. Is that kind of like a, a differential capacitor, except you get, you're you using two different ones in a well, configuration? Well, they are turning 
and have the same value when they're set right. See, right now they're both closed. Right. Then when I open one of them, the other one opens up. Okay. So they're okay. just kind of synced together. So that's not really a diff differential uh, opposite of that. Yeah. 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 This is the uh, T-network. It's one uh, on the capacitors on each yeah. side of the T. That would actually be more like a butterfly capacitor, wouldn't it? Uh, well, well, when one, well, no. Let's see. When uh, one gets maximum capacitance, the other one, well, the other one gets max too, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. See, a T network is a it's right. a coil on the ground and then a capacitor on each side. Right. Well, there's two of them. There's one on the top and then one on the bottom, and these two outside capacitors, one that turns at the same time, and on okay. the inside they turn at the same time. And this small call here is for the uh, the uh, six meters. I, I built a T network uh, this week, okay. and uh, boy, it it tunes just about anything. It is so so uh, cool. That's the advantage of the T network. Yeah, it's super wide range. These are uh, rollers that are ready to be put into tuners, and they're they're just uh, finish building them. <coughs> um, so, th and, and you built this this tuner? Mm -hmm. We build all the parts. We punch out all these fiberglass pieces. Uh -huh. We do. We machine all these rods and these blocks. And if you look right here, these are bearings. That uh, they these are non-binding -bi bearings. See the inside of that swivel, so it never binds. Oh, okay. And this is a contact for it. Uh -huh. And then here are the capacitors you build. These are, uh, this is your uh, differential, differential for a T-tuner. Now, that's a butterfly right here. Right, right. You can see that, you can see the inside, that's the butterfly. Well, on a butterfly, each one of them uh, kind of track each other, don't they? Like maximum, uh, maximum, minimum, minimum. Uh, uh, well, yeah, each side. We have the same value, right? Right. Yeah. right. Whereas on, I guess, on the differential, it it's opposite, right? right. One has the minimum, one has maximum. Right. One goes up, one goes down. Right. Now, if you notice, this uh, loop capacitor here, mm -hmm. the contacts go to the loop, so there's no losses. In other words, there's no wire that goes from here to a solder lug to another connection, you so we eliminate that connection. This is the capacitor you use in your loop tuner That's because right. these are your terminals for your wire That's loop. Right. That's right. And you notice that the mounts are built into uh, the frame of the capacitor. This mm -hmm. bolts right to the chassis. All right. So much. Oh, look at this. Look at her. Look at her building this capacitor there. It's a, a blade and a little spacer and a blade and a spacer. Do you dream at night that you're putting those together? You, you like it? I like it, man. You're building your own capacitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Capacitors and rollers. and You can see all the parts there that we yeah. punch out. And you punch these out over to the metal shop, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. That is so cool. So cool. You got, is, is your wave solder in here? Uh, yeah. Is that the wave solder right there? Can we look at that real quick? All right. I think we can get in here without getting a slot solder on us. So, uh, oh, okay. Whoa. Look at this. Look at that uh, solder flowing. It looks like water. Is that, that is water, isn't it? Is that solder? It looks so clear. I, th I thought it was water. My goodness. Yeah. Oh, man. It can't get to you in here, right? He's processing the calls. Sealing the ends of them. Okay. All right. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna step out because my my throat's telling me that I'm I'm breathing salt or something there. Hi. Okay. Well. That's the antenna. Uh, 
this is a mount that a pole goes through, yep. and then two telescoping antennas goes on this side. So you have a V, and that's the connection to it. And there's a balling on the inside. Okay. And you've, you've got uh, a similar deal. They call it the octopus, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Where you can put multi bands on. Wood for the window mounts. Oh, okay. Yeah. These are cool. I helped a guy install one of these over in North Carolina okay. uh, last uh, year. Uh, a new ham over there. That's cedar. Well, cedar's a good wood. Mm -hmm. It smells good. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> this is the cedar. Uh, you cut you cut it to fit your window, mm -hmm. and it's got it's got feed throughs in here to feed th feed your antennas through it. And uh, it's a uh, it's a cool product here. Now, do you paint that, or does it go out cedar? Uh, it goes out just like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that's the reason we chose cedar. Yeah, there it is, right there. It's uh, weather resistance. Uh huh. Okay. More more coils and is this for like oh what is this for is this a uh, what is this? An apartment antenna. Apartment antenna. Yeah. This, you know, that mount that you saw. That oh, is it this? Is this coax? Okay, I see. Yeah, a whip right here. You put it on a yeah, a ground there, and this is coax. Yeah. Cool. And then you adjust it for whatever frequency you want. Staple gun. <clears throat> okay, more more products. Uh, I like your uh, I like your little test jig here that holds it while you build it. Just uh, uh, made out of uh, wood here. Let's you assemble it. That's cool. Again, HF radios. You got a bunch of HF radios here. HF radios and watt meters and so forth. Up here, you got your welded loops. I would say you've got a nice roll of antenna wire there. Now, you know, pe people, 5,000 pounds. 5, pounds, man. And that's how you unroll the wire. Can yeah. You know, uh, some people call it antenna wire. I never really call it antenna wire because I was like you, poor growing up, and we used any kind of wire we could get, right? Yeah, yeah. There was no such thing as antenna wire, but this is truly antenna wire. Is that like... Um, that's 14 gauge, seven strands. Yeah. Is this still... Uh, Inside there? Or no, that's, that's copper pure copper. Pure, pure copper? copper yeah. But it's uh, seven strands? Hard drawn, yeah. And that weighs how much? 5,000 pounds when it's full. My that's goodness. We can put it where you unroll it, so we had to build this device to to unroll it. Have to, have to yeah, man. All right. All right. Looks like we're... Uh, Repairing. Tim here. Yeah. yeah. And well, it looks like Tim probably works on a lot of different things here. What are you working on right now, Tim? A67. Okay. Cool. Let's take a look in here. I think people will really be interested in this. So, what we've got here looks like to me, this is uh, your uh, surface mount stuff, right? It is, yeah. It starts off over here where we six screen the solder paste onto the PC boards. Okay. So, you just cover the PC boards with solder paste. And yeah. Stick them in here. And then you load all these reels. That's the parts, right? Yeah. Those are the... Resistors, capacitors, transistors, ICs, diodes, and this is the machine. Those are the oh, heads man. that fix the parts up. Let's look at this. This this machine's going. This machine's putting some parts on here. I don't know if we can see it or not. It's going pretty fast. Now those parts aren't soldered. They're just stick sticking right with that paste. Uh, that's right. It just kind of okay. stays on there and, until it goes into the oven. The oven melts it all. Yeah. You know, it's amazing that that paste holds in place. You would think you, you know, they could they could slide or fall off, but uh, this is uh, this is kind of cool here. 
And then what do we got here, Martin? The oven. The oven. So they'll lay the boards in it. It just um, goes through this oven with four temperature zones, and uh, it heats it up and just solders it. And you can see. All right. She's, I think she's wanting to run one, Martin, right there or something. Or are we in her way? All right, so she's going to lay them in the, in the, the heater here, and it's going to heat them up, man. All those little parts are just being held on here with uh, like a paste you see that? Yeah, up here. Zones. Oh, you got four, four zones? 270 degree and 250 degree. And then you got cooling fans. So these boards now are going through the heater to melt that solder. And it's going to come out down here, and maybe it won't be hot, maybe. All right. Um, I'll tell you, Martin, that's some small parts on there, man. That's some really small parts on there. Uh, but that's, uh, that's uh, all right, man. I like it. I like it. All right. Well, oh, that was the foxhole. Uh, that was the foxhole yeah. one. But